this is Tim from Special Artists and Surface Miniatures. Over the last couple of months, I've had a lot of people request that I do a video on painting multicam. This is how I paint multicam. Uh, it's not the only way. There are people that paint it a lot better, but this way seems to be perfect for me. Most important, over the years, I've had to find a way and a technique that helps me, that makes me happy, that looks good on the war game table, and it looks good for when I have to take photos for the company. So, by all means, when you're painting anything, Paint for yourself. Don't. It's always good to have people inspire you so that it pushes you a little bit more, but don't just get so pissed off if you paint something and it's not that good looking compared to what others do. Don't worry about it. Allow yourself to fail. Also, I would recommend that uh, before you use this technique on the special artisan service miniatures figure that you just purchased, take, take another figure, take a lesser figure, Take a, an older figure uh, and paint, use this technique on that. Allow yourself to learn the technique. Allow yourself to have the muscle memory of the technique. Allow yourself to understand the color dilution and what happens with color and allow yourself to experiment. And then once you become familiar with it and comfortable, then apply it to your, your tabletop miniatures, the ones that you're wanting to, to display and put on the table. Uh, so. This, this is going to be a series of videos. The first one, which this is, is the base coat video. This, the other videos will be about highlighting, applying the uh, camouflage pattern itself, and then doing shading. So uh, I know I'm rambling, but I hope this video helps. Please share. Let people know about my company, Special Artists and Service Miniatures. I'm a U.S.-based company. If you have any comments, please leave comments below on the YouTube channel. Uh, also, uh, I have a Facebook group called Special Artisan Service Miniatures. I'd love to have you in there. Uh, I can't think of anything else. But again, uh, most important, this is not the only way. This is the way that works for me. I hope that it helps inspire you, and I hope that it gives you a better gaming and painting experience. The goal of this video is to show you how I do a base coat of my figures and uh, show you the quick techniques that I have used and continue to develop over time to help me quickly paint figures, but then also achieve a look that, that I am personally happy with, uh, that I think would that looks good on the table, that looks good for photographs. Again, uh, I am not painting for competition. I am not painting for anyone else other than myself. So. I think it's important to keep that in mind. So as you are trying and as you are developing your own skills, you don't put yourself under pressure from all the other painters that have been painting for a lot longer. And, uh, you know, you just enjoy. Painting camouflage can be stressful. I, I understand. I completely agree. Uh, and again, uh, for me, when I'm painting camouflage, it's about tricking the eye, giving the appearance of a good camouflage pattern, because really, guys, when we were playing on the table, we're not going to see everything. I mean, we're not going to see the best paint job ever, because, um, you know, your eye, is, we're just not looking at that close. So, again, just relax, enjoy, and try this technique this is not the only technique, but this is what works for me. So uh, here we go. I know I'm ranting. Okay, so this is uh, a RPK-16 gunner from my Spitzna Alpha range. And what I've done here is I did a Zenithal uh, highlighting and priming. And what is that? Well, uh, I, I first started with taking this figure and using... Uh, Badger Stylized Primer. And the base coat was their flesh. And what the flesh color is a light light brown color, light, light tan. And then I took, I'll let that dry, and then I took the Badger's White Primer and at a 45 degree angle shot, you know, let's see, shot, uh, you know, where the highlights are where the light's hitting the top part of the of the, the pouches, where the light's hitting all the top of the folds and stuff like that. Now, when painting camouflage, especially multicam, I don't want to use a dark, dark base uh, primer. Uh, personally, I don't like that. 
uh, because it, it can take a lot of time to recover and bring up the, the, the highlights. So for this figure, I, I wanted to go light. Uh, and uh, in other figures, I definitely might use a darker gray or a black with the white uh, Xenothal highlighting. But uh, for this figure, since I'm going with a tan color, because the base color of Multicam is a khaki, whatever kind of khakis you want to use, uh, but it, it, it would just take a while to recover that. Plus, I also want to still achieve my highlights. So how do I do that? Well, okay. Let's talk about the palette that I'm using. This is just one of the colors that I use for painting multicam base, base color of multicam, the base uniform. It's an, it, this is a great color, Panzer Aces Old Wood. It's a khaki color. It's not the only khaki that I use, but for this video, this is what I'm gonna use. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a combination of uh, using a light tone wash, mixing it with old wood, Water, if you guys don't have one of these dropper bottles, uh, this is a Reaper dropper bottle. I have it, I love it because I can fill it with water, I can fill it with, with medium, uh, and it's just great because I can do my measurements. So I highly recommend getting one of these bottles. And also, this is Vallejo Thinner Medium. I use this, I put a drop in here. So what we're trying to do is uh, make a, basically a wash, very thin wash, and we're going to quickly uh, apply the wash onto the figure. Uh, another quick tip. I love these lids from, God, I don't know if this was from a, a, a Pringles can type lid. Uh, a lot of times my wife and I will, uh, when she's done eating yogurt or whatever, she'll give me the top of a lid. Uh, and it's great for just holding washes. It's a great palette. And uh, it also holds liquid in well, so I use these a lot. And then when you're done with that, well, you flip it over and you have another palette here. So it's real easy, real quick to have. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take one drop of old wood I'm gonna do a one drop of the light tone and I'm just experimenting right now. I, I uh, well, need to shake this up. I'm just experimenting. I, I don't want to go too dark with this because again, I want to recover my highlights. I may have to add more. Um, here is, I'm going to add some thinner medium. Just going to add a drop of the thinner medium. And then I'm going to add a drop of water. And let's just see what this looks like. Just with this. Take my handy dandy craft brush. Mix it around. That's a nice brown shade. Um, now the important, the other important thing is, you know what? I'm going to add some more water, just another drop, because I'm wanting to do at least two thin light coats of this wash. The idea with these type of figures is that it's not these figures. The detail comes out more when you're using light washes. You don't want to just take thick paint and just quickly paint over the figures without any type of dilution, you will lose a lot of detail. Um, so what I do is I take my brush to see how, how thin this paint is. And if I can see through there, uh, it's good for me. I'm going to add just another bit of water, another, another drop. So what I'm going to do now is mix it up. And the other important thing is, before you apply this wash, take have a paper towel and just dab your brush onto the paper towel. Let's get this focused because it removes a lot of the excess water. And this is a challenge painting with this, all this microphones and stuff in here. So I'm just going to wash this. The idea behind this is not to completely cover the figure in one coat. Not at all. I'm wanting to build up layers so that uh, I don't quickly kill all of my my highlights that I have achieved through the Zenithal highlighting. I 
apologize if this is going out of focus. If you guys could see how I have this camera and the microphone set up. Oh, crazy. Okay, I am not painting the uh, webbing in the same color. I like breaking it up. In fact, I'm going to paint the webbing in uh, ATEC camouflage pattern. So the base will be multicam. The base uniform will be a multicam flavor. And then um, the webbing will be all ATEC. I personally like breaking things up because that's what you see in, in pictures of these guys wearing just multiple things multiple patterns and then what i love is when i see the old school patterns being worn okay so right here quickly i have achieved a quick quick color quick coat of paint now before i apply a second coat i need this to dry <clears throat> how do i do that quickly my trusty hair dryer so I'm going to take a pause here and then use my hair dryer and dry it off and then show you what it looks like and then we'll do another coats. Okay, I used my hair dryer and uh, you know just basically dried off all the paint that I've just applied. And this is this is the very first coat of this wash. Now the reason why I mixed the uh, old wood color with this army painter light tone, I didn't explain myself, is that I wanted some sort of light shading to occur. But also I wanted to use, and again, um, the reason why it's very light paint is that I didn't want to lose any of the pre-shading that already has taken place with the Zenithal highlighting with that pre-shading technique. I'm trying to get some, I hope, hopefully that's easy for you guys to see. But after this is dry, you can see how the highlights are already... I haven't lost any highlights. It's not just blanket color. It's not just something that I'm going to have to spend hours and I get really anal with things. Trying to recover all of those nice highlights. Um, it, so it, it doesn't work like that. It, thankfully, with the lighter colors or the light coats it's a lot easier for me to recover. Now, uh, I'm going to apply a second coat. So then I have a more, um, more coverage, still not use, not losing any of my highlights, but also utilizing the shadows that are there. Now I will later on go back and use a series of washes to achieve different tones, mid tones, darker tones, after the camouflage has been painted so don't worry that like well what wait a minute how are you going to use any shading or anything i do i go light first and then with the power of the washes i then apply my shading through those washes so uh, i'm going to take another layer here another coat and start applying it to the figure and then, you know, sometimes it does require uh, three three coats, but that's okay. It does not take long. With the, the the great thing with this craft brush is it's a big, broad brush. So I can cover a big area very fast. I don't base coat my figures using a, a, a one or an ot or even an ot ot brush. You're... Um, why do that to yourself? It, it, you're just increasing the time it takes you to base coat a figure and get stuff done. Um, so these cheap craft brushes are perfect for this sort of thing. Plus, it uh, they do all the heavy lifting, really. So you don't wear out your nice, expensive Windsor New Newton brushes. Okay, I'm going to... You can still see the, the paint is wet going to take a pause real quick do a hairbrush or yeah hair dryer and um, show you what it looks like after that okay so we've got two coats applied i'm hoping you guys can see this really good 
hopefully this is coming out with the light. So what what's happened is the we've got the base coat done and you can still see highlighted areas of the figure. Good example is right above the knee here, those lines right there. See the lines on the sleeve. Uh, see the, the, the folds on the legs. Those are not as dark as the darker recess. And that's exactly what we're trying to achieve. We're not wanting to make this completely a fully painted figure that's really, really thick. That's going to require a lot of time to bring up those folds again. So I'm very happy with that, with what I see. Now also off camera, uh, to save time for the video, I did see some areas where I had missed and are areas that I thought the wash should go further more. So I took my brush and just put it in, especially around uh, the area in between the legs where there's a lot of shadow, where it's dark already. So why had that be light? And then also underneath, I also for the combat shirt, if you see, hopefully this comes through, for the combat shirt, I didn't put a lot of paint on because the, the, the combat shirt is, is, a, is a lighter color anyway. So I wanted that to come through. This fold right here, uh, this fold right there. On the camera, hopefully you can see it's a lot lighter than the side of the arm. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm wanting. So now what I'm going to do is to help save my time, myself time, and also my sanity to allow myself to correct any mistakes going forward, I'm going to do the base coat of the web gear, of the uh, plate carrier and all the pouches and stuff like that and use a different color. And uh, so I have to get, get a different palette going and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, now I'm going to paint the plate carrier, like I said, and I brought a, a new palette and a new selection of colors that I'm going to use for the base coat of the ATAC webbing. These are the colors that I'm using. It's a, a mix between uh, Vallejo model color desert yellow as a darker, uh, as a more yellowish base, Vallejo khaki, and then again I'm going to use a light tone wash to get that that darker area, the darker shadows. So put this on here. Now this palette that I'm using <laughs> came from a, a mixed nut uh, <laughs> container. So that's just a lid from, from mixed nuts. Works perfect. Got my three colors there. I'm going to do at least three drops of water. And I'll do a drop of the Vallejo thinner medium and mix it up. The ATAC camouflage or the base of the camouflage seems a little greenish brown to me so that's why I've used the uh, the khaki as well as the desert yellow just to kind of break that up okay so this is important gravity can be your enemy doing this because whenever we apply the wash since it is a wash it's, it could all go down if it's not controlled so I'm going to light a candle and make sure that uh, this does not happen. But the important thing is, is when I have my brush, it's full, I, I do put it right onto my paper towel that's right next to the camera. I can't see it's out of range. And so now, from top to bottom, I'm going to apply this to the web gear. And if some paint, you know, goes down, it's okay because when we apply the washes for the midtones and the darks, um, it will it will be fine. It will be kind of hidden. 
So see, because I take my brush on that paper towel, I have controlled the amount of water that's on that brush. I'm hoping that you guys can see the color difference between the two. At first, there may not be any. It may be hard to see. And you can achieve the differences by making something either darker or lighter uh, to, to break that up, to show the, the difference that it is web gear. See how fast that is? And see the control that I have? And this 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 paint's pretty pretty darn liquidy. It's it's it is a controlled wash. So okay. How does that look? Again, I cannot tell, I won't be able to tell till after the video if you can see a bit of a difference in the color. I'm gonna take a break, use a hairdryer, be right back. Okay, so I Applied the first wash to the web gear, did put it on the hairdryer, dried, and I had to do another two, two and a half coats of the web gear color. I did that because I wanted to build up the difference between the uniforms because they are, it is a khaki. So there, it is a challenge trying to, to make this color khaki of the plate carrier different than this color uh, khaki brownish, tannish brown, whatever, of the base uniform. So to achieve that, I put three coats on this plate carrier. And you can see there is a difference. Hopefully. I pray to God you can. And a lot of guys might say, oh, but I still see some white spots in this. Well, uh, bean counters, yes, you do. And you're going to, and that's fine. The great thing about using the washes for shading later on is that you can just apply the washes right into those spaces and it will take it away. It will take care of it. So do not worry about that at all. Uh, also underneath the arms, between the arms, hopefully you can see it is a lot darker because there's a lot of shade there. Well, so I, I to achieve that even more, I just applied more of the wash just to make it a little bit darker. So I hope that you can see the differences right now between the base uniform color, the plate carry color, but most important, how you can see that the highlights, because we've done washes, instead of just straight paint, undiluted paint, you can see that we have a lot of the shading done as well as the base coats of the first highlights done of this uniform. The amount of time this saves is it's incredible, especially if you have to paint multiple figures and it's getting this, your squad going. This is just, in my opinion, the way to go. So I'm going to stop with this video, and then the next video will be going back and applying the highlights to both the main uniform as well as the plate carrier, and then uh, we might do the helmet and, and everything else. But I hopefully this helps you guys. And again, this this can be used. This technique can be used. Not just for this stuff. I mean, I, I use it for a lot of my figures. Uh, speed painting ACW figures. Uh, whatever. I use it. I'll change out the camera here. Here's uh, an, one of my ISIS figures. Uh, hopefully you can see this. That uh, I am almost done with. And this was painted using that same type of technique. And this isn't even black. There is no black on this uniform. They're dark, dark, dark blues. The shading is achieved using the Army Painter shades, which I can directly apply into the folds. I can surgically put them in there. And, uh, yeah. This, I love these this Isis range. Very happy with it. But I digress. So... I hope this video helped. Please share it. Uh, please tell everyone about me. Uh, my company is Special Artisan Service Miniatures. I'm a US-based company, and I am here for you guys. I'm here for gamers to make your gaming experience even better so that we can inspire 
other people in this wonderful hobby. Have a great day.